Why I wanted to bring this into the mix is, again, uh, a bit like having a child where just something uh, you couldn't imagine begins to occur and something you could never figure out actually takes place. And this is why I feel this is so important for all of us because this painting of mine, uh, Phoenix Arise, which we see upstairs, which is five foot by seven foot, and there's a print of it over there as your clay, which is a little bit smaller, that when this was printed in card form and I dropped the cards, it mirrored itself. And I think that this is a moment when we begin to understand that art is never about the artist, it's always about different propositions of our greater humanity showing themselves through different voices, different artists, but it's actually the deeper mind. Because when this, and this again is an accident, when this mirrored itself, we suddenly see this relationship of the possibility of birth, or the yoni, that, that brings forth the sense that birth is not one or the other, but wholeness and wholeness, lover and beloved, coming together, mirroring each other, and from this we will also begin to understand what the Maya are talking about because the entire Maya system is based on the recognition of the fractal. The Zolkin, or what they call the holographic module, is based upon the fractal. What the fractal here is saying is that when we understand the first principle is creation, life, then we are dealing with wholeness. So wholeness reflecting wholeness, not partial, reflecting partial, we find the possibility of life, of birth. And that's why when I put it together and it created, as we can see, and the Maya call it the loom of the Maya, but we see this holographic double helix DNA weave coming from a painting. And if we consider painting, painting is our first language. Painting is what we did in the cave. And this is why when we understand and why optically speaking, like high definition, I don't know about you, it bothers me because the eye does not see like that. It's very intimidating because everything's so clear. Because the way we compose an image optically in the brain is five different places. It begins with like sparkles in the eyes, basically is what we see. Then we will start to see how from that, it will move into almost like Mondrian deconstructing the tree, you know, these different uh, pieces, and then like Cezanne, until finally the eye composes it. And this is why art, as I say, is much more how we see rather than photography, interestingly enough. We actually see because we feel rather than, um, and this is why this relationship, as we can see with the slit eyes, do you see in the slit mouth? Do you see the ancient alien face? Do you see the, the uh, ET that we keep seeing? Why this became very important as well in seeing this alien face was it started to tell me when we understand the art form of consciousness, we begin to trust the fact that, that essentially we have been developing uh, and, uh, across the ages. And what seems alien to us is actually our deep root system that, like a tree looking down into the ground, you can't see where you're growing into. You don't know you have roots. But why this is important for us is this starts to say that we're going from an age of communication of I and thou. People say, why aren't we in con contact with the aliens? Why aren't we in contact with the crop circles? Why aren't we? It's because we're maturing. If you need contact, it's because you have a parental relationship where you want someone to hand you a book with the new instructions. When you have communion, you have the root system that says, inspire me and I will inspire you. This is a relationship, meaning that what you put into the roots will amplify through you a greater sense of your own capacity. And that's why we will see why this becomes so important because, again, creation being set in motion is where we will start to see the story, and many of you have seen this story, many of you have not, but this painting, Phoenix Arise, as we see it uh, creating the mandala, as we see it coming full circle, reveals a nest and feathers, just as in the story of the phoenix. Why this is important is also it's saying that our heart, our nest, our sense of coming back together has prepared us for this next stage, which is, as we will see now, this, just as in the story of the phoenix, once the nest is built, it erupts into flames. When I pulled out the cards, we can see that the fire 
erupted. But it doesn't just erupt in a type of random pattern. What we will discover now is that what is happening is that indeed it is blossoming. So this is showing us that creation is blossoming. Why this is also very important and why it relates to the Maya is that the fractal relationship here is essential because it says that each aspect is in and of itself whole. It is the whole of creation. It is the one. But as it unfolds, it creates unique geometries, a unique blossom. And that's why we will see that the blossom is not just one, but as Jung said, we know from experience that the protective circle, the mandala, is the antidote for chaotic states of mind. The God image within us expresses itself as the mandala. So a painting is blossoming. It's showing us mandalas. And it's creating, as we can see, remarkably large um, uh, and beautiful uh, holographic blossoms. And we look at the center of each and their suns, S-U-N-S's. And this is very important for all of us because it's really trying to say that in the past we fought over the differences between one another. In the future we will realize that we are holographic, that we are not born into time, we're born into creation, and therefore we will awaken as a unique art form. And that's why, as the Hopi say, the knowledge of the sacred DNA is in the weave of our baskets. They look like Indian baskets, and they also look like Indian headdresses. And that becomes a deeper story because this is also Shumash ceremonial ground. And the ancestors are saying, yes, you, your pain is not just your pain. You're the whole of the human struggle. So your blossom is not just your blossom. You are the purpose for all of this. You know, we journey through you now. We meet with you now, here. We are even now sitting with you for thousands of years. And that's why the Phoenix Arise, I wrote this, that it, it reveals that, we're not, that we are an art form. We are not born into time. We are born into creation. We are each a phoenix, a unique blossom of creation, whole, holy, holographic. Each of us wears the robes of our sacred DNA. Life is our inheritance from the ancestors. Let us be worthy of them and this great, difficult, and noble adventure in consciousness, art, and meaning called being human. And that was another thing that why I feel it's very important that when we think about mantras, when we think about what we repeat privately, start giving consciousness material to work with. That's what I've been trying to do, saying if it's about cultivating memes, then let me cultivate that which will develop more and more of this greater capacity. Because I want to have discussion as well, but I would like to actually just have us look at some of these rather than me talking about them too much. If you have questions, please ask. But I would like to have, again, this, this trusting of our deeper pattern knowing. That, that I say it's like puberty. There's nothing to figure out at this point. It's let the energies wash upon you. The technology here, I realize, is that when we understand what the mysteries were about, it says that you will begin to understand that, that you have a self-correcting technology, that you have a limiting factor in who and what you think you are. This keeps you from burning out. But this will also help you establish in yourself, and this is where we will see the universe's organism, these stories that, that I journeyed into that precede the hieroglyph but will show us a lot of, uh, again, the, the relationship of, of the archetypal, the energetic, of intuition. And these are also on the ceiling, so we don't see them uh, so much. So I like to bring them out and say, they're quite beautiful. Um, <laughs> and everything in these paintings, like all of my work, was about asking questions. I was fascinated with the idea of the spinning disks of reality being created by vibration, and that we are always uh, creating architecture. This energy is always awakening into form. That's part of our artistry. And this being uh, this relationship of the different qualities of time and the spine. Again, I started to think of this as the divine masculine and the compartments of mind that say, as we put things together, we can end up at one time. We put them together differently another time. But that everything is a type of interconnected um, energetic language. And this is, of course, uh, as above, so below. And 
will take us on this journey that I feel is very much part of who and what we are now, is that we can focus into time and this particular world, but once again, this greater story is able to mediate uh, as above, so below, within us. And in the dragon's mouth, this I showed you upstairs, but this, again, was a looking into the multidimensional origins of consciousness and asking questions with paint that I couldn't ask any other way. And so much of this, and I, and I don't really want to tell you what to see, but just to have you see it, uh, because I think that, as I say, this is to go in. And the Codex Tor Illuminated books, because they're up on the desk, I don't really uh, spend too much time with them, but they are such an important key to all of this because they're a 21-year process, and they will take us into a place where, as we look, it's saying, you know enough, don't worry about studying, see what happens. And this is where we'll see the relationship, again, of the Watchers, um, the Holy Family, or as above, so below. Lee, yes. you were saying this is Shama's sacred ground here? Yes, the Shumash, yeah, absolutely. This is the, um, and that's one of the things that, um, let me see why that happened. Um, one of the things that I think is very um, important is that when we think about uh, ancestral energy, when we think about the energy of, of uh, environment, uh, that part of what we are doing now, I believe, is to really try to honor the, and you'll see the stones at the end here, that we're so used to getting somewhere that, that it's not here, it's there. But what we're going to find more and more, I believe, is as we start to let our energies uh, interface with these uh, ancients or these ancestors, that it's not really I and thou, but much more of a sense of we are here as well. Dance with us. Do you know that sense of celebration? So that's what I'm finding. And this... Um, but I'll just go through these. Let me sit down um, here. Yeah, I could. Uh, you know, these things are so stunningly beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like your jaw just. Well, is it, they, and they're very much about this exploration of the ancient knowing. Now, what's very interesting here is. This, um, we will see, a lot of questions we, we try and ask intellectually, but they're really only when they reveal themselves graphically or musically that they really kind of make sense. And I was very interested because people said, well, what's the difference between the Piscean and the Aquarian mind? W what is that? Because well, you know, people say, well, what's ending? And I was fascinated with these questions too. And what's really lovely is where you can live into some of the answers or at least suggestions. Because this gets at a, a suggestion. It says, here with the monad, this, this hieroglyph, essentially that each of us are encoded with a unique story, a unique um, monad, a unique energy. And that it falls into the waters of time. And here, almost like an electrical circuit, do you see it's the on-off switch? And if we think about the Piscean era, it was on-off you're either dominant or submissive. You are either, you know, that there's a sense of we are in charge because we have the guns, um, you know. Um, <laughs> wasn't, you're wise, it was, and, and that, but this, this, if you think about creating a, a mental structure so that it can finally then, when it, it turns on, hold the energy, the next page we will see, and this is why I want you to feel how this shifts in your perceptual apparatus. Feel how it changes in your, your, your body, in your optics, when we go from this model of the binary to the next page, which is the Aquarian. Here we see the energetics underneath the binary. Here we have the binary, we open the page, and it reveals that what is showing itself now is energy. But we have the structure to support that energy. And that's why the, the codex was, and again, this is, this is meant to be a very long um, uh, inquiry. And this is why we'll see there's more language, more of a, of a way of asking questions. And because they were books, uh, I could work intimately. I bound the books blank and then would work uh, with the questions. What became quite fascinating was the relationship to environment 
uh, because we were in Mexico at the time, and I found this very Aztec kind of vibe started to come into the work itself. That's why I started to realize that a lot of what we think of as isolated uh, personal is actually when we think of ourselves more like radios, uh, that, that we can become porous to these different signals, and they will mentor us. That's one of the other things I'd like to really have us take away, which is that we're so used to thinking we have to figure out beforehand, but this is actually saying, no, 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 just take the journey, see what happens. Because as I'm saying, I'm not talking about what all of these are, because I think they, to a great degree, transcend that, and they really are meant to uh, take our imagination, see where the imagination um, will go.